Wow, Tesla to recall nearly all its US vehicles and largest ever recall. Oh my God, largest ever recall. This sounds like there's some really serious safety issues here. Here's another one from the Wall Street Journal. Tesla recalls millions of vehicles over latest safety flaw. Oh my God, they got so many safety flaws and this one is the latest safety flaw. Automaker's biggest recall to date covers more than 2 million EVs. Tesla is recalling nearly all the electric vehicles it has sold because the font on some visual warning lights is too small, marking another safety setback for the world's most valuable automaker. So based on these articles, what you're seeing in the media, you think Tesla has so many safety problems and this is the latest one, it's going to kill you. Well, let's take a look at what this change actually is. It's an over-the-air software update that changes these icons on the left to these icons on the right. The parking indicator, now it says park in larger letters. The brake indicator, now it says brake in larger letters. What the federal motor vehicle safety standards say is that the words have to be an eighth of an inch. And here the icon is the required size, but the word is a little bit smaller. So they had to go ahead and just make it the full word. You could argue that this icon is actually better for showing that there's an issue that you need to be aware of, but according to the letter of the law, the words need to be that high. So they applied a small over-the-air softer update to make the icons different. And they did that across all their cars. Nobody had to go into a service center. Nobody had to take any time out of their day. They just downloaded the softer update and the icons changed. They probably didn't even notice. As a matter of fact, the recall softer update actually went out before the recall notice even went out. So all this drama, biggest recall ever for a minor font size change. Now you might say, okay, well, it's a relatively minor detail, but it is still safety critical for people to be able to read the font. This just shows how careless Tesla is compared to other automakers, right? Other automakers have never had this problem. You've never heard of another automaker having to have a recall for the size of their indicator lights. Well, let's take a look at some of these petitions. This is a petition for inconsequential non-compliance. When you are not complying with the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards, but the issue is so small that it's not worth a recall, you can petition NHTSA for an inconsequential non-compliance petition. So let's take a look at this from General Motors. General Motors has determined that certain Cadillac and Escalades do not comply light vehicle brake systems. Hmm. GM submitted a petition for exemption from the notification and remedy requirements on these vehicles. GM explains that the non-compliance is that when the parking brake is applied on the subject vehicles, the telltale light that illuminates within the cluster does not meet the lettering height requirements. Hmm. So the exact same issue Tesla had, but the only difference is when GM had the issue, instead of fixing it, they just petitioned NHTSA to not fix it. Now, because Tesla has this over-the-air software update capability, they can actually fix safety issues, even a minor safety issue, like a font size that might be too small, they can fix it over the air and just apply the fix to 2 million cars overnight. It's done. GM actually has to bring them back and fix them. And because of that, they just decided not to fix it. They said, look, it's not really a big deal. The operation and performance of the park brake itself is unaffected by this telltale condition. The park brake applied telltale is in red color contrasted across a black screen and conspicuously located. Additionally, the four letters of the word park are all capitalized such that the height is preserved across the width of the word. So they're submitting this petition. They're trying to say, look, this isn't even a big issue. 
and they didn't have to recall the vehicles. Okay, that's just GM. Here's one from Kia. Let's take a look. So, hydraulic and electric brake systems. Let's see. The information presented by the Telltales is correct. Hyundai has not received any complaints regarding the cell, uh, size or visibility of either light. So exact same issues. The Telltale was a little bit too small. They petitioned for inconsequential non-compliance so that they wouldn't have to fix it. So that's GM. That's Hyundai Kia. Here's one from Ford from 1994. Ford determined that some of its vehicles failed to comply with the labeling requirements, controls and displays. Hmm. Hydraulic brake system. In Ford's judgment, the condition is inconsequential to motor vehicle safety. The affected Ranger and Explorer brake display telltales illuminate right as required, except for the missing identifier word brake. So they forgot to put the word brake. And they didn't do a recall. They just filed this petition. All right, here's another one, Porsche. Light vehicle brake systems. Porsche has determined that Panamera, Cayenne, and Taycan do not fully comply with the light vehicle brake systems. Porsche explains that the non-compliance is equipped with brake wear indicators that do not meet the minimum lettering height requirements. Same exact issue. The only difference is they decided not to fix it because it would be too expensive. And Tesla was able to fix it as an over-the-air software update, even though it was minor, because they have that capability. So, I mean, this really makes me upset. That's why I'm making a video about it. Because... You have something that's actually a huge uh, safety benefit. The ability to update the car software over the air. The ability to take a car and continue crash testing it even after the car has been delivered and to ship fixes, ship improvements. Be able to make an issue disappear without having to have the person remember to take their car into a dealership. This is actually a huge safety benefit but the media is spinning it as if it's actually a safety issue. Coming here to the lab, recreating this whole crash, performing it flawlessly, capturing the result. Now we have some post-processing to do to validate everything. But once that's done, this is in the pipeline for over the air updates to the fleet, uh, improving the cars. We think over time this will change how you design for vehicle safety. It's all based on knowledge. I think this is just the beginning of a journey for us. The reason we're doing this is simple. It's, it's because A, we can, we have the ability, and B, it's because it's the right thing to do. They're telling the story completely backwards. And other car companies, they simply don't fix the issue. How is not fixing the issue better than doing a voluntary software recall and just updating all the software over the air? It doesn't make any sense. There's definitely a double standard here in the media. Somehow, the media has become about not truth and informing the reader, but on getting revenge on the people they see as bad and praising the people they see as good. It's no longer about the truth. It's about who is good and bad. Now, that may be fine if you want to take your media organization in that direction of being political. You want to go after Elon Musk. You want to go after Tesla. Claim the cars are unsafe. But when you're telling people that something that actually improves their safety is actually dangerous, you're potentially putting lives at risk. You're misinforming people and people could potentially get hurt and die all because you need to tell the story about how Elon Musk is bad and Tesla's unsafe. And 
they're constantly dramatizing these minor software updates and ignoring the actual serious safety critical recalls that automakers are doing across the board. Let's take a look at just a few that I found on Google. Okay. 2023 Ford hybrid recall update. Is your escape or Maverick included? Ford Motor Company has issued a recall of 150,000 vehicles due to a potential fire hazard. Hmm. The recall stems from a defect that could lead to an engine failure. In such a scenario, engine oil and fuel vapor could be released into the engine compartment. If these substances accumulate, then it could lead to a fire. Okay, so you tell me, what's more serious? What's the biggest recall ever? A minor change to the icon? That's so minor that when other automakers had the issue, they didn't even fix it. Or an issue that could cause your car to catch on fire. Hmm. All right, let's take a look at another one. Consumer alert. Kia and Hyundai issue recall for 3.3 million vehicles. Advise owners to park outside. So you see, again, so, sort of the language they're using to paint this narrative of Tesla's being unsafe. Biggest recall ever. Well, it's not the biggest recall ever. There's other vehicles that have been recalled in much greater quantities. I think they said in the Wall Street Journal article it was the biggest recall for Tesla, but obviously it's nowhere close to being the biggest recall, either in terms of the number of vehicles affected or the severity of the issue. And the reason the number of vehicles is so high isn't because there's any mechanical defect in these vehicles. It's simply because they just updated the software on all the vehicles. Hyundai Motor and Kia have issued a park outside recall for 3.3 million vehicles due to fire risk. Until these recalled vehicles have been repaired, the manufacturers say the safest park place to park them is outside and away from homes or structures. Hmm. That seems like a bigger and more serious recall than changing the icons a little bit. Okay. Now, here's another one. This is from 2009. Uh, Ford recalls 4.5 million vehicles because of fire hazard. Ford confirmed the single largest recall in the company's history. That's more than double the vehicles that were in this Tesla recall. And again, <laughs> Tesla recall is a softer update to change the icon size. This is an example of the vehicles catching on fire. Okay. Ford F-150 uh, pickups, this is from last year. Ford F-150 pickups recalled because parking brake could engage while driving. Hmm. Parking brake could engage while driving. You tell me, what's serious? The icon for the parking brake being a little too small? Or the parking brake actually going off while you're driving and you lose control of the vehicle? This is because a wiring harness could be damaged over time if it contacts the vehicle's rear axle housing. Then you got these GM ignition switch recalls. General Motors ignition switch recalls, 800,000 cars. They announced they were recalling more than 3.4 million cars. And um, this led to, uh, let's see. And this led to... 30 million cars recalled worldwide, and GM had to pay compensation for 124 deaths. So again, you tell me what's a more serious issue deserving of media coverage. 124 people dying because of faulty GM ignition switches that could break and cause you to lose power and crash the car, or an icon change. And, you know, Tesla doesn't even have an ignition switch. That's one part that can't even fail because it doesn't exist on the vehicle. Here's another one. More Ford and Lincoln vehicles recalled because the doors could open while driving. Hmm. That, again, sounds more serious than an icon with a font size that's too small. I could go on. This is from December 2023, just a few months ago. I could go on and on with the list of all these recalls for major safety defects that are seen in some of your favorite brands. And 
Nobody reports on this. It's just normal. I mean, of course, you see the articles here, but it kind of goes under the radar, right? An article gets published. Nobody really cares. Compared to the way these Tesla software updates are dramatized, I mean, it's just ridiculous. These are minor issues that these same automakers have argued are inconsequential to safety, and NHTSA agreed. But Tesla's able to do it because they have the over-the-air update capabilities, and these other automakers don't. Not only are they incompetent in building the vehicle, you know, Ford, for example, is number one in recalls, they don't have that over-the-air software update capability that would allow them to patch a lot of these issues. So it's sad. It's sad what's happening in the media today that reporting who's good and who's bad, Elon bad, Legacy Auto good, has gone above reporting information that is critical to consumer safety. Over-the-air updates are not a safety flaw. They are a safety benefit. They allow Tesla to fix issues, even minor issues, that other automakers would not address. And instead of writing a story that says, over-the-air updates allow safety fixes to be applied remotely over the air, a huge benefit to consumers. The story is how this is the latest safety issue, it's the biggest safety recall ever, and this is so unsafe you should just stand, uh, stay way away from it. It kind of reminds me of the Gelman amnesia effect, wet streets cause rain. This is very much an example of a wet streets cause rain story. Something that is a huge safety breakthrough being painted as if it's actually a safety issue. So making this video is a call to journalists. Do better. Your number one obligation should be to the truth. Not writing a clickbait story, not writing a sensational story, not writing a dramatic story, but telling the truth. And telling the truth, especially in really critical areas like consumer safety, is potentially the difference between life and death for somebody. If somebody reads these articles and they're convinced Teslas are unsafe, and they stay away from technologies like over-the-air software updates, advanced active safety, at the scale of millions of people across the country, yes, people will die who wouldn't have if they had known about these technologies. So it's sad, but hopefully the media can improve. Hopefully this is a wake-up call to some journalists. Look deeper, report the real story, and at the end of the day, you're probably going to feel a lot better about your career than if you're misinforming people for clicks. Oh, and one last thing. This is a great example of why you should be getting your news from X. Here you can see the Reuters story that I opened up by talking about, and it's got a community note. Readers added context they thought people might want to know. Normally they've got this clickbait headline, you don't read the article, you walk away misinformed, and the truth is buried deep in the article. Well, with X, when you have that situation where it's intentionally misleading, they put a little note here. This is a minor over-the-air software update that increases the size of warning indicators. And you got a link to a direct response from Tesla. And they say the same thing. You can see they completely ratioed Reuters, getting thousands of likes compared to hundreds for the clickbait story. And they've got 366 comments, 213 likes, 156 retweets. So you got the short sellers retweeting it, but you have a note on the tweet so that anybody who sees it isn't fooled by Reuters' attempt to misinform their readers. And you can get that right here. And these community notes apply to everybody. They apply to Reuters. They apply to me. They apply to Elon Musk himself. So one more reason why X is the go-to place for getting the news 
as mainstream media organizations like Reuters care less and less about the truth and more and more about pushing their worldview.